So would you say that same-sex attraction always originates with some sort of trauma, whether it's a deficit trauma or a, a incidents that happen that were hurtful, or is it is it nature to some degree? How would you how do you look at the origin of same sex attraction yeah. from a clinical perspective? So I want to help us look at this from an attachment lens. There is mm-hmm. also a religious lens to look at it through, but first let's talk about it through an attachment lens. Children need to know that they are loved unconditionally. Full stop, as they say. <laughs> um, that doesn't happen perfectly. It happened perfectly, I think, in one family, the Holy Family. <laughs> and in every other family, I would call it a spectrum of mm. knowing how beloved you are because your family is meant to model God's unconditional mm. love for us. <clears throat> so for those who that doesn't happen to a degree that causes attachment insecurity, meaning the caregivers I'm geared to being bonded with and to know that they can meet my needs, when they're not able to meet them, that can develop into what we call an insecure or anxious attachment style. So I would argue from an attachment lens perspective, children who have insecure attachments with their parents, with other confluent factors, are susceptible to certain psychological issues. One being same-sex feelings that can develop. At around age two or three, for instance, if a boy is insecurely attached to his primary attachment figure is mom, but there's some insecurity in that attachment. Mm-hmm. At that age, he's meant to, according to a lot of developmental models, to shift his primary attachment to dad at the gender identity phase of development, which is around two to four years old is what and a lot of people you're saying think. that's a healthy thing. That's a good thing, to right? To shift to dad at around two. For men. And I'm talking about men and same-sex mm-hmm. attraction from a, from a male developmental perspective. There's nuances and different angles to consider mm-hmm. with women. So at around age two to four years old is when we see men, boys needing to shift from mom as primary attachment figure to dad. But when due to a variety of issues that that doesn't occur as completely as it should, men can have what I would call gender insecurity start to emerge and develop. That could be due to both psychological factors in the family, but also external factors like interference or interruption through abuse or peer issues or an older sibling causing problems or even genetic predisposition. And that's the kind of elephant in the room, how much of this is nature, right? We don't know how much we know it's a significantly smaller than majority percentage. Most studies estimate genetic predispositions at around 28%. And that's not even like a single gene characteristic. That's a combination of genetic predispositions that total 28% of genetic predisposition towards developing same-sex sexual feelings and behaviors in adulthood. But keep in mind, most psychological traits that we consider normal for treating and therapy have genetic predispositions on average around 45%. And it's around 30, 28 to 33% for same-sex attraction, according to the Ghana et al. study, which was the largest study ever done on the human genome. And that mirrors what we see over and over through twin studies. So th- let's say 32, 33% genetic predisposition. Guess what the likelihood of being religious is? predisposition, 33%. But we don't say someone is born religious or not. By, wow. Yeah. So uh, that's so fascinating because the, the narrative today is you're born this way and you're a bigot if you don't acknowledge that or accept that. And there's no conversation, I think, happening nationally. You're not allowed to have the conversation about whether there were issues in your childhood there were deficits, you think you used the word, that led to same-sex attraction because same-sex attraction is supposed to be seen as, if not even a neutral, a good thing. That an is a, an innate and affirmative thing, yep. um, a positive thing. So what would be some examples of, you mentioned the attachment to a male figure, a father, you know, between the ages of two and four would be important for boys as an example. What would be some examples of why same-sex attraction might develop because of that other 70% or so experiences that a, a kid might have. And as I answer Am this- Am I understanding the the, the, the the data correctly? So you're saying roughly 30% is, genetic is predis- due to genetic deep predisposition. So the 70 other percent of this happening- It has is, to be environmental factors. Is environmental factors. So I guess the question is then to be more clear here, what are those environmental factors? So I'm going to explain some that I think both relate to my own story, but also to the stories of hundreds of other men mm-hmm. and people I know and clients I've worked mm-hmm. with. And I'm going to share with you that the church has not been silent on this either. The Catholic Church has released document after document throughout the 20th century in the United States, 
and internationally through the Congregation of Christian Education, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, identifying these same types of factors as potential causal factors for the emergence of homosexuality. For instance, they've said things like exposure to pornography through like, they say license and shows and publications was the old timey phrase they use, but exposure to pornography, which we know happens at an extremely early age right now with children. That's a trauma. Okay, so especially if somebody's already insecurely attached with their same sex father figure, and on top of that, as sensitive as a predisposition towards some of these things that make maybe more susceptible to developing these issues, combine that with negative peer experiences with their male same sex peers, and then early exposure to pornography, well, unmet attachment needs can become sexualized because that energy, that longing, that desire for a father to give me attention, affection, and approval, that for either due to a lack of the attunement of the father or other factors contributing to a difficulty in integrating or internalizing that attachment, might make that child susceptible to developing a sexualized attachment if exposed early to pornography. Mm -hmm. And the church identified that in multiple documents as a potential causal factor. They also talked about abuse being a potential causal factor for the emergence of homosexuality. Sexual abuse sexual or any abuse. abuse. And, and other abuse, but especially mm -hmm. sexual abuse. They, the church also identified, and these are church documents from Vatican congregations. So these are high level church teaching documents. So we don't have to have certainty, though, about what causes same-sex attraction to know that the church also says it's objectively, the inclination itself is objectively disordered. Mm. The acts are intrinsically disordered. The inclination itself is objectively disordered. So my question is, I'll, I'll share some more examples mm. as we talk, mm. but if something is objectively disordered, did it come from nothing? Is it objectively mm. disordered by default? I would say we should be more curious than that. Mm -hmm. And even if we don't know the exact answer for every person in every circumstance, at least give them the opportunity and the right to reflect on their own life and think what might have happened that contributed to why I have this objectively disordered inclination and how can I invite God's love mm -hmm. into that part of my heart or soul or body or mind? I think that's such a good point, Michael. And even if you're not a Catholic or Christian or practicing faith, the studies that have been done show that, you know, maybe 30% of this is from nature, you know, same-sex attraction and sexual identity, and then the rest is from environmental factors. Even separate from a religious context, shouldn't be people be curious? Yes. What were the environmental factors that led to my sexual interests and, and attractions? Yeah, and I would argue, too...